What, what's been your impression of your group so far uh, through eight, eight practices? I, I think our group's come, coming at a really good pace. Um, you know, we got some older guys in the group, a lot of young dudes out there running around. Um, but, but they've adjusted. It's a, it's a constant teaching. Um, pleased with where they are thus far through, through eight practices. Boogie seems like a kind of guy that's going to need to take a step forward with Nozak out there. What have you seen from him and just knowing that this is kind of, I think, his third year on campus and it's kind of his time to take that next step? The, the main thing from Boogie has been, has been obviously the leadership within the room, um, keeping the group together as far as when they get together outside of our meetings. Um, he, he knows this system. This is his third, going into his third year in the system. Um, just that constant leadership and his willingness to f continue to improve on the little things every day. Jimmy kind of sticking on Boogie. I know he was a little bit banged up at times last year and, and had to fight through some things here and there. I guess just, I guess, how did he kind of take to that? How frustrating was that for him? And now, you know, being back healthy and going through the spring, how's he kind of been with that, I guess? Well, he had, he had, he had that knee injury at Arkansas week two. Um, it, it, it was very frustrating because obviously – for the people that don't know Boogie, he's the type of kid that wants to be in there, wants to play, and it was it was a nagging injury for a couple of weeks. Um, he he missed the Kentucky game, but we got a group chat, and he's the first guy that texted the guys in the group chat the day before the game. Hey fellas, let's go out and represent. Let's get this done while he's here in Columbia because he didn't travel that week. But I think uh, as the year went on last year, he he got healthier toward the end of the year and going into the bowl game and was able to gain that confidence back. Hey, Jimmy, um, with how thin the edge room is, have you guys been hopping around any guys on the defensive line and any interior guys working a little bit on the outside? No, not really. We, we've gotten, obviously, we've gotten TJ some reps at the field end thing and um, in, in, our, in our nickel defense. But um, no, those edge guys have been coming along. Coach Lucas doing a great job with it. With your <clears throat> newest guys, so like Elijah and Xavier, what have you seen from them through eight? Um, Elijah uh, started out practice one, got got nicked up a little bit, so he missed a couple of days. Last week was really his first time back in the fire. Um, he he obviously brings some. Some a, a good skill set for us, um, playing playing the three technique in the nose. Um, he's learning it day by day. Uh, we do a lot a lot of stuff on defense, so he's digesting that. I think the meeting times and, and the certain walkthroughs that we we'll have have helped him, um, and and he just get him to continue to keep progressing day by day. Um, and then you go to to the rookie, as we call him, number sixty four, uh, Xavier McLeod. Um, Talented, very talented, but very young. Um, it's the same as Elijah. It's a, it's a constant new thing every day, but you see flashes. Uh, we go ones versus ones on the goal line last Saturday, and he's in there at the zero nose and, and held his own. So just putting those guys in these competitive situations to see how they respond, and then hopefully they gain the confidence and, and execute at a high level. And then we roll into the summer, obviously, with Coach Day and his staff. And, you know, we want those guys to have a really good summer. That way, August and fall camp, it's not a shock to their body. They should be way ahead from where they started in the spring. But please, where those two guys are at right now, they, they got to keep improving and continue to improve and fight to improve. And, and they've been willing to do that as far as – extra meeting times, asking questions from the older guys. So I'm very pleased with that, that they're coachable by not only me, but by their peers as well, their teammates, the guys in that room that have played in competitive situations. TJ mentioned Jamal White was the guy who was really standing out to him in the spring. What have you seen from him? Jamal, night and day from last year. Um, he, he's another young guy, redshirt freshman. Um, but he's continued to fight and battle and com improve every day. Um, the biggest thing with him is his maturity level has has came uh, far and beyond. I'm so excited where where he's at. He just has to continue to improve. You know, our room is really in our position is really a big fundamental position, and you can't just do it one play and get away with it. It, it has to just be a continuous grind 
play after play after play after play. And that's the way we try to train in our room from an individual standpoint. And, and that's our expectation. I, I know he's not practicing in the spring, but how much are you and Sterling having to fight over where Tonka is going to line up and, and getting him uh, when you get him back? I wouldn't call it a fight. Our goal on defense is to put the best 11 out there that gives us the best chance to win. Uh, but Tonka's been great. There's not a player in our room that watches more tape than him, that prepares off the field. He's really an extension of the coach because with as many young guys as we have in the group, he can grab those ones that are in the back and, and give them little tips and little nuggets to help them understand the scheme. TJ Sanders is a guy that's redshirted and played a little bit last year. Where have you seen the most growth with him, and what kind of role will he have as you kind of project maybe looking towards the fall? I think the biggest thing um, is just a confidence level. Um, you know, when TJ first got here, he hadn't played a lot of football, uh, I think maybe two years. So just to see that growth, like he understands what, what a release is now. He understands when he makes a mistake or – doesn't play a certain technique the right way, what were the issues that caused him not to play it the right way? But then when he does, he's going to let you know, because TJ is a very confident guy. When he does do the correct, correct things, he'll say, oh, coach, I got him right there. You saw the long arm. You saw the knockback. So just his confidence and, and believing in what we're doing. And then also, as TJ has gotten – older and, and in that room, he's he's developing into a leader as he's, he understands now. I'm at the point, like you said before, Zach's gone, right? <laughs> Zach's gone, so he is also helping Boogie and Tonka bring those young guys along. I, can, I hear him in the meetings, position meetings, if a young guy messes up on a play or something, hey, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you need to do this. So it's just a growth development. It's a continuous – a con continuous work to improve for that. Obviously, a lot of guys who were freshmen last year in your group who are now into the second year. Any of those individuals or guys who who are coming on and, and taking taking a nice step for you? Well, well, the, uh, someone mentioned Jamal Weiss early. I think he's really taking a step for us, and he needs to continue to do that. Um, I think Dre Martin is continuing to improve daily uh, with a great work ethic uh, and not so much and not just as the work ethic on the field, it's the work ethic off the field as far as studying and tape and those things. Uh, Demetrius Watson is a little banged up right now, so he's been down the last couple of days. Uh, looking forward to getting him back as well. And then Felix Hickson um, is, in that, is in that second year of guys that are younger that, you know, just fighting to continue to improve. Thank you. Have a great one.